Hey everyone, we're back in the shop making progress on the Dark Arrow 1. Lately, we've been working on a lot of interesting mechanisms that are critical for first flight. We're wrapping up some of those right now and we wanted to share more about them. Let's jump right in. This face gets attached to the seat back, but I do like the idea of just eliminating all those foot clumps too. I've got the canopy sitting here inverted on the table to talk to you about one small but important challenge we've been working on lately, which is how do you keep the canopy closed while in flight? To solve this challenge, we came up with a latch system. I've got the two main components of this latch system right here, the hook and the latch, and they come together and lock just like that. Now, the first hurdle of getting this latch system to work is getting these two components to come together as the canopy closes. To solve that, we custom machined these phenolic brackets, one for the hook and one for the latch. The one for the hook is this horn shape you see here, and that kind of takes this geometry from the canopy hoop and brings it flush and level with the geometry of the seat back, which would be here. And you can kind of see what that looks like when they come together, just like that. Now, as you can see, there are two sets of hooks and latches, which brings me to the next aspect of this challenge, which was how do you get the latches to disengage at the same time? The solution for this was this rigid aluminum tube you see here, which ties together both sets of latches and disengages them just like that. We're about to bond all of this in in the cockpit, so why don't we go over there and I'll show you how this whole thing comes together. Here at the cockpit, our latch system's in place and the aluminum tube I mentioned earlier is now protruding from the fuselage. This is just temporary until we have a button to engage with our latch system, but you get the idea. Moving inside the cockpit, you can see what the latch assembly looks like clamped into position. Here you can see one of my latches and over top of the whole thing we have this carbon fiber cover that both ties the whole thing together and protects our aluminum tube from getting accidentally engaged. Later we're going to be adding a cable driven handle like this that will engage with our aluminum tube and this will allow us of course to open the canopy from inside the cockpit. We'll be saving that for a later video though. For now let me just demonstrate the close and open action starting with the close. So coming down with the canopy you can see our hook and latch engage. So. Just by closing the canopy, we get automatic engagement of our latch system. And this is nice because there isn't a secondary step that you have to remember in order to secure your canopy before taking off. To open, we simply engage with the aluminum tube and push up on the canopy. Just like that. There are a few small tweaks we're going to be doing to modify the system, including the addition of the handle I mentioned earlier, but overall we're very pleased with how everything engages and latches up. I'm going to get to bonding all of this into place, but let me hand it off to Keegan who's going to talk about the exciting work going on with our throttle mechanism. I want to show you guys what I've been working on, which is the throttle control mount. So it's this unit right here that I'm holding and I'm partway through bonding it. It actually started out as a flat panel, so I infused this earlier. This is carbon fiber and infusible sorc, so we infused this uh, with resin, cured it, threw it up on the router table, and then I machined out this flat pattern, and then I began to fold it kind of like origami. So you can see the folds here that were completed for the sides, the back, and the front. And what's left is to fold in the top and that'll create a nice little rigid uh, box structure. So this is 
mounted on the aircraft in between the pilot and co-pilot, independent of the instrument panel. If you've seen some of our previous videos, the instrument panel actually lifts up with the, uh, the canopy itself. So this will be mounted on the wheel well. So that doesn't move with the instrument panel. We have a, uh, a friction style throttle knob, so you can move the position of it and lock it into place. And you can see how, before I close this out, how this interfaces with the inside. So we have a lot of nice room in here uh, for this to be mounted. So the throttle mount is all bonded up now. It's one complete structure. So if you try to twist or bend it, it's actually extremely solid. On the topic of creating these little types of structures, we actually teach an aerospace composites course where we go into what type of cloth to pick, where to get this infusible core, how to lay it all up, how to do the infusion, as, as well as a bunch of other aerospace composite topics. If you're interested in checking out the course, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, anyways, getting back to how this mounts into the aircraft, I want to show that quick. So I'm standing inside the cockpit, roughly where the pilot will be, then we have co-pilot right here. We have the instrument panel installed and how it'll roughly sit. So the throttle mount will sit right underneath the instrument panel and mount right up to the wheel well, just like this. So that'll be the next step now that this is completed. I'm gonna get that mounted to the wheel well. And then I'm gonna go into routing the throttle cable all the way up to the engine bay so that I can interface with that butterfly valve. All right, fast forward and we have the throttle mount now installed. So it's a pretty simple bonding operation, just our standard E120 adhesive and then some clamps. We got it mounted right up to the wheel well. And then I also installed the throttle controller. In addition to that, I also got the cable routed through the wheel well and then firewall forward. So if you take a look up there, you can see that the engine is missing. I needed to get access up there. With all that being said, we're officially ready to do a quick dry run test of the throttle control itself. So right now it's in the full throttle position. So if I unlock it, we're able to move it out and also move it back in and then lock it out and then back in. So really excited about that. I think it's going to work really well once we get the engine hooked back up. There are a couple components that I'm waiting for in the mail before I can get it back interfaced with the engine. The throttle mount is separate from the instrument panel and the reason there is that the cable itself has a little bit more strict requirements for it as opposed to the wiring that goes into the instrument panel. The UL power engine only requires a throttle. It doesn't require a mixture. The mixture is all controlled through the ECUs. One other interesting note is that the prop itself has a controller that's semi-automated. We did some videos on that. I'll leave a link up above. Really excited with where this is at. Next steps, get that engine installed, get those components in the mail and get this fully hooked up. And we'll see how that turns out. Enough about the throttle mount. You may have looked up and seen this thing. It's a new addition to the instrument panel. What is it for? Why did we add it? Let's find out. We made some updates to the instrument panel since the last time we showed this. Uh, the big one you can see right in front of you is the glare shield that we added. This is made out of a flat panel made out of Soric infusible core with a fiberglass skin on both sides. So we infuse this in a flat section and then CNC cut it in a profile that we were able to fold into this three dimensional shape. There are a couple purposes for the glare shield. I'll talk through those. The first one is um, 
It shields glare on the instruments, so any direct sunlight would maybe make a glare on the, uh, the flight displays. So this casts a shadow so we don't have glare directly on the instruments. The other purpose of this is it makes a place for us to mount the GPS antenna. So the GPS antenna will sit back here, and that's part of the reason why we made this out of fiberglass, because it's transparent to radio waves, and we didn't want to have any kind of uh, shielding of the, of the antenna. Another benefit of this structure here is it, it adds a little bit of stiffness to the, to the instrument panel. When you cut these big holes for the displays, uh, it gets a little bit skinny in some of the sections, so this built that back up. It also adds a little bit of extra real estate on the panel for our switches. So this glare shield displaced where we had the switches before, so now we're able to move them up here. This would be the landing gear switch, the gear position lights, and then the, the lights for uh, landing, strobe, and nav. Uh, we'll change out the gear switch to be a little bit different style, uh, but this is here for demonstration. So you can see the gear position lights are lit up red right now. That would indicate uh, in transit. It's kind of a cool feature with this fiberglass glare shield that I want to show. One of our customers had suggested that you could install lights on the bottom of the glare shield to act like a map light. And what's interesting is that this is uh, translucent to light, so instead of having to install light fixtures, you can actually just put lights on the back side of this and it'll shine through. And this fiberglass does a nice job of diffusing that light, so I'll show what that looks like. We'll kill the lights for that. So I have a red light here that would act as like your map light. Uh, at night when you don't want to mess with your night vision, you use red light so you can read your map or uh, maybe your GD&T pocket guide. Or maybe you need a little bit more light. You could have a white light back here like that. And you, can, you can really light up the cockpit or whatever you're trying to read that way. Kind of neat feature. A couple other things about the panel. The way it sits in the aircraft is like this. So it's tilted, uh, actually, so it's normal to your line of vision. Normally in a lot of these light aircraft that have the panel just like perpendicular to the ground, which makes it kind of inclined to your field of view. We have it tilted up a little bit. And then the glare shield is also angled up so it doesn't block any of the instruments. You might notice there's this handle here. I'll talk about what that's for if you peek inside uh, the panel from up above. So the Canopy has to attach to the instrument panel, but then we need uh, a way of having it separate from the instrument panel, and that's what this mechanism does. So the handle is attached to this double scissor mechanism here, and that's connected to these linkages that run out to four pins at the outer perimeter of the panel. So that those locate with uh, some bushings that are mounted in the canopy, and then once you pull the handle, it retracts those pins so the canopy can separate from the instrument panel. So that would be for service or in an emergency when we're in the flight testing phase. What I don't have incorporated right now will have some sort of safety mechanism to prevent this from being accidentally pulled. And then there are also provisions required to make sure that the canopy separates in the correct trajectory as it comes away from the, the uh, rest of the fuselage. So that's still in the works, but you get kind of the idea here. This was a little bit of a tricky mechanism to design because we're converting this linear motion from the pull handle into a linear motion and these four different pins. So you have to split that motion into four different segments and they all have to move equally. It was tricky. We tried a bunch of different mechanisms, uh, bell cranks and cables and things, and eventually settled on this. So uh, we might refine this a little bit more, but the general principle of operation is there. Okay, you can see how the instrument panel interfaces with the canopy right here. So I'm going to cycle this up and down first to show you that. There it's closed. There it's open. Okay, I'll close it up again and then I'll pull the uh, jettison handle and then show you how the canopy separates from the instrument panel. Okay, it's closed. I'll pull the jettison and then I'll lift the canopy off. Three, two, one. Okay, and then it's going up. All right, so let me hand this off to someone. We'll be wrapping up these mechanisms soon, but then our next major milestone is going to be the first engine start and all the tasks that go into that. We'll be documenting this process and we look forward to sharing it with you. So stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next video.
Moving inside the cockpit. <laughs> you can see you. You can see. 